This Plinko feature video will cover caching. Plinko offers a complete built-in caching mechanism. This can be accessed easily with the query result cache extension methods, but also manually using the cache manager. The cache may be configured with profiles in the application configuration or manually using cache setting objects. Also, Plinko's caching mechanism is provider-based and comes equipped with two pre-built providers, memcached and HTTP cache. So the first thing we want to look at is how easy it is to use the query result cache extension methods. So let's step into our from cache unit test. Now what we're going to do here is pretty simple. We're going to create a data context and we're going to build up two queries. We're going to build up a user by last name Adama and then we're going to call from cache against it. This from cache is going to return us an ienumerable set. Now that query, if the result is not found in cache, is going to go to the server, get the result back, and insert it into the cache. If the result is already found in cache, it's going to forego the database query and just pull it from cache. Same thing with the query below, only here we're going to call from cache first to default. So rather than returning a set, we're going to get a single entity. So because we have two queries that are doing the same thing, the first set is actually going to go to the database and insert cache keys into our cache with the results. And then the second time, it's actually just going to pull them from the cache rather than having to go to the database. Now, a few technical aspects I should mention. First of all, the cache keys are being managed transparently behind the scenes. They are being built out from the query themselves, which are going to be hashed and turned into the key. This means that Plinko is going to take care of your keys for you, and you're not going to have to worry about them. Also, when we call these methods, we're not passing in any parameters. We're just calling from cache and from cache versus default. This is going to cause the caching mechanism to use the default profile, which is configured in our app config but we'll look more at that later. So let's start by running these tests. All right, I'm going to clear our log out here. And now when I hit F5 and jump to our next breakpoint, we notice here at the bottom that two cache inserts happened for two different keys. These were for our two different queries, and they built the two different keys, again, from the actual query itself. Now, these results were not found in cache, so Plinko went to the database, got the result, and inserted it into the cache. So if I hit F5 again, and I step over our next statements, these were the exact same queries. So notice that this time, the cache was hit for those particular keys. So there it is, the easiest way to use caching with Plinko. You just build up your queries, add from cache at the end of them, and Plinko will take care of creating and managing your cache keys, invalidating the cache, checking your profiles and configurations, and returning to you the results. But now let's look at some more advanced uses. Oops, closed the wrong one there. So let's take a look at our settings test. Now the first thing we're going to see here is how to call the from cache with an integer. And this is going to tell the cache how many seconds the expiration should be for that cache object. So here we're going to say get this query and keep it valid for five seconds. So let's go ahead and run this, and I'll explain the rest of the unit test as we get there. So again, I'm going to start by clearing out the log, pressing F5. So notice that we ran the same query twice, and down here we first inserted the cache key, and then we hit the cache for it. But this was set up to expire after 5 seconds, so if we continue one more time, we have inserted that again, because the cache expired, the from cache method knew that, so it requeried the data and reinserted it. Now, if we look at the next part of this unit test, what we're going to do here is actually build up a cache settings object and then pass that into the from cache. Now, cache settings is pretty configurable, so we're only going to show a relatively simple example. But here we're going to set the mode of the cache settings to absolute rather than relative with a number of seconds. And then we're going to give it the absolute expiration time of right now plus three seconds. So essentially, we're going to do the same thing we did above, only this time we're going to just go about it a little bit differently. So let me clear out the log and press F5 again. And again, notice essentially the same thing is happening. We made the query, inserted it into the cache, and then the second query just hit the cache and didn't have to go to the database. Now that we've waited an additional three seconds, we can hit F5 again. The cache expired using the new settings object, and it inserted it back into the cache from the third query. So I'm going to clear out that log, and let's look at the last part of this unit test. Now here, note the cache empty result property being set on the cache settings object. We are setting this to false. This means that if we bring back a query that has no results, it will not be cached. So with our next two queries, we're building them out to say, by complete date of date time now. And there should be no records resulting for that. So Plinko should go to the database, find that there are no results, 
when they come back, it will not insert that into the cache. So if I hit a 5, sure enough, no caching was mentioned in the log because nothing was inserted and also nothing was taken out. So that's how to manually configure and use the cache settings object. Now let's take a look at cache profiles. So before we look at any code, let's take a look at how our profiles are configured in the application config. We have added a cache manager section, and inside of there, we have added a list of profiles, particularly three, very short, short, and long. You can add and configure as many of these as you want, and whenever you call from cache, you can pass in a string with a profile name, and the cache manager will know to go and get the settings from this configuration. So in this case, all of these profiles are using a relative expiration with a duration of a certain time. Now in our first unit test, when we called from cache and we passed in no value, it was using the default profile. So those queries were being cached for five minutes. Now, note that very short's expiration, or I'm sorry, duration is only three seconds. And let's go take a look at our unit tests again. So inside of the profiles test, we're going to do essentially a very similar thing to what we did earlier. We're going to create our data context and create our queries. And then when we call from cache, we're just going to pass in a string this time. And again, we're passing in the profile name of very short. So like we did previously, we're going to get the query, insert it into the cache for three seconds, get it back from the cache, wait for it to expire, and see it get reinserted. So let's go ahead and run this test. And I'm going to clear the log. And we run our first two queries, and we see we get an insert and a hit. And if we just wait one more second, we can run that last query and see that again it expired at the appropriate time for the very short profile and was reinserted. And so that's how easy it is to use profiles with Plinko. Just create them in your app config, and then when you call from cache, pass in the name. So now let's take a look at the very nifty Plinko cache feature of groups. So what we're going to do here is manually get our cache settings object from a particular profile. To do this, we call the cache manager.getProfile and pass in the name. So in this case, we're going to pass in long, which by the way has a cache duration of one hour. And then we're going to call dot with group against that cache settings object, and we're going to pass in a group name. This is going to set the group name on this particular cache settings object to video test. Then every query using that cache settings object is going to be associated with that particular group. Then later on, we're going to invalidate that group by passing in its name into the cache manager's invalidate group method. This is going to cause all the associated cached data to be immediately invalidated. So what's going to happen when we run this test is we're going to see two inserts. We're going to do an insert into the cache for our user query and our task query. We're going to immediately get back that same user query and task query from the cache. So we're going to see two hits. And then after we invalidate the group, we're going to call those queries again. So we should see two more inserts. So let's go ahead and run this test. I clear the log. Hit F5 just to run through all of it. And again, we see exactly what we expected. We inserted the two queries into cache, hit the cache twice for both of them, invalidated, and then when we called those queries again, they were reinserted into the cache. And that is how easy it is to use cache groups with Plinko. And now we're going to look at how to cache items without using the query result cache extension methods. Obviously, there are going to be times when you want to insert something into the cache that is not just a query off the Plinko data contexts. Doing this is very simple. You just call the cache manager, which is located at codesmith.data.caching. And then there's three simple methods set, get, and remove. Just set the object you want by specifying the type and passing in the key and value. Then you can get the object back by specifying the type and key or remove it just by passing in the key. And all of this is going to use the existing caching rules. So because there's no mention of a duration or a profile name, this is going to use your default profile. Overrides are available to support taking in a cache settings object, a profile string, or a duration, just like the other from cache methods. So if we go ahead and run this test, all of our unit tests succeeded. So we can see that we inserted Marvin into the cache, we got him back successfully, and then we removed him successfully. So caching with Plinko is not exclusive only to your queries. So the last thing I want to go over are the cache providers. Plinko's caching mechanism is provider-based, and it comes with two built-in providers, the memcached provider and the HTTP cache provider. To implement your own provider, all you have to do is create a class that extends the abstract base of the cache provider, and that can be as simple as overriding the set, remove, and get methods. To configure your application to use a new provider, you just go into the app config and update your cache manager section. So here's an example.
In this configuration, we've added a new section called Providers, and in that, you just specify the providers you want by giving them a name, description, and then data type. To use that provider, you just update your cache manager's default provider to one of the names that you've added. So it's that simple to implement, plug in, and use a different cache provider. That concludes this video on caching. We hope you found it to be both helpful and informative. To watch additional Plinko feature videos, please visit us at Plinko.com. My name is Tom DuPont. Thank you for using Plinko.